Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to explain to you about the plant lab development, acclimatization, and distribution. Uh, this uh, module was uh, prepared by a team from Department of Agronomy and Horticulture, Faculty of Agriculture, IPB University, and part of plant propagation uh, course. Uh, if you remember correctly, in vitro culture, this is uh, one of the uh, main tools also for plant propagation. The definition of in vitro culture or tissue culture in common is the technique of growing plant cells, tissue, organ, seed, or even other plants part in a sterile environment on a nutrient medium. And the base of this uh, technique is the totipotency, which is the, abil the ability of a single cell to divide and produce all of the different uh, cells in an organism. And in vitro application actually uh, very large. It's not only for micro propagation. Of course, for today, we are mainly discuss about the plant propagation. But in fact, the in vitro uh, technique uh, can be applied for plant breeding, for instance, uh, making variation uh, using somaconal variation technique. Uh, during the selection, it can help with the in vitro selections to, uh, to be the first test before the, f the real field trial. And then protoplast uh, fusion to make uh, also a new uh, variety combining uh, the impossible uh, combined traits if using a conventional uh, uh, hybridization and then also producing haploid culture to speed up the hybrid uh, process genetic engineering especially for uh, plant uh, regeneration after the en genetic engineering such as uh, uh, using agrobacterium or even the uh, genome editing and also for embryo rescue and in vitro can also be used to produce uh, metabolites uh, uh, such as using cell suspension culture and also hairy root and also it can help for plant conservation it can be used to apply the slow growth uh, procedure in which plant can be maintained as uh, small as possible with a uh, very slow growth to uh, reduce the need of the space and also the cost of the maintenance and even cryopreservation in which uh, we can uh, store the plant for more than 10 years for instance and uh, last but not least is that the in vitro application can be used to produce disease free materials in plant propagation is also important because sometimes when we want to certify the seed for commercial uh, use we have to make sure that the seed that we are produce is uh, free from disease and uh, i guess you remember uh, last week uh, subject that the, the plant regeneration pathway in vitro can be through many uh, scheme and there is also uh, such as uh, directly from explant to become a somatic tissue sometimes it can uh, directly producing auxiliary buds and become a plant lab sometimes it should follow the callus uh, pathway and then become adventist buds and to be plant lab and even we can uh, make an embryogenic uh, callus, we can get embryogenic callus, sometimes uh, to become embryo, we can uh, through a direct uh, somatic embryogenesis or indirect somatic embryogenesis. I guess this uh, already well explained uh, last week. And micropropagation, this is the biggest uh, part of tissue culture uh, using that are related to our of course, because uh, basically micropropagation can also be considered as a vegetative uh, propagation. Uh, the 
terminology of micropropagation is in vitro plant propagation for clonal propagation. So clonal here means vegetative propagation, as uh, uh, as I mentioned, to produce true to type and uh, what we call generally uh, similar to its mother plant. And the the step of micropropagation we will discuss uh, here uh, today. It's about uh, the first is explant selection. How we select the explant for initiating uh, micropropagation uh, process, and then culture establishment or sterilization, multiplication, elongation, and rooting, hardening, and acclimatization. And here the example of that of a strawberry. So this is the the explant selection. And then after that, we uh, make a sterilization uh, to establish the culture and then doing the multiplication, elongation, and producing root, or rooting. And then before acclimatization, we put it in the hardening condition. What is that? We will uh, talk about it uh, later on. This is uh, the example of sterilization of pineapple. You can also uh, see the detail of this step in our uh, YouTube uh, video in this uh, dress. Please visit that, or you also obligatory to visit uh, during the practicum. And you can see step by step or, or what we have uh, to do to initiate the uh, explant for uh, pineapple. And after uh, getting a uh, uh, first explant like this, using sterilization step, and then we will get the multiplication uh, step like this, and in the end, elongation step to produce the roots and complete set of plant. First is explant selection. We should choose uh, explant, of course, if possible, from healthy will maintain and feed mother plant. Of course, in one uh, direction, the use of in vitro culture is to get the uh, free disease material, uh, but in general, if possible, we should get the explant from healthy, well maintained and fit mother plant. And it will make it easier for us to do the initiation process because during the sterilization part, uh, the effort that we have to, to to spend is not that big. If possible, we also should uh, get it from reliable sources that can be traced back because uh, when you do it in uh, industrial ways, you will deal with certification. Of course, uh, the, uh, the body that will give you will certify your your seed, will ask uh, where the uh, plant comes from, etc. And it should be uh, in a juvenile uh, phase to get uh, faster uh, to respond in the culture. And we should choose part with high systematic activity to ensure that the explant will develop, can be developed easier to be uh, a new set of plant. And then aseptic culture establishment, uh, we, we also call it uh, uh, sterilization. We should uh, select a juvenile explant. They are actively uh, growing, or we can uh, consider it as a meristematic uh, tissues, such as a shoot, axillary buds in the leaf, axillary um, meristem tissue, or uh, apical dome. And uh, during the initial sterilization outside the uh, laminar, we can wash it with detergent in running water, immerse in fungicide and bacterial solution, and after that we, we, we can reduce the explant size if the initial size is too large. I guess you can also get the, the nice illustration during the practicum. And sterilization in laminar, so after that we, we, we do it in the laminar with alcohol, sodium hypochlorite, etc. We, we, we wash uh, uh, several times to ensure that the, the small particle and also maybe uh, some small contaminant there are left will be 
uh, disappear. This uh, illustrates how we, we, we do the sterilization, such as uh, the, the example here is banana. So first we, we, we took uh, 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 the inside part of, of corn and a little bit of a stem here. And after that, we, we, we peel it uh, uh, slowly until we get uh, this uh, maybe seven uh, centimeter size uh, of that part. And after that, we, we dip it in the Best, uh, sorry, in the fungicide and bactericide uh, solution and uh, using a sucker like this uh, we, we, uh, we will run the, uh, for instance uh, about 16 hours or overnight and then after that we, we move it uh, to the laminar and we uh, wash it using sodium hypochlorite and uh, after that, we we cut it again, yeah, and then just take a little part of it, and uh, if possible, uh, of course, it should be uh, containing uh, juvenile part of plant or meristematic part of plant. And here, even uh, some people are still using disinfectant, such as betadine in Indonesia. Uh, to avoid uh, contaminant during this process and uh, it's funny that sometimes people also put uh, vitamin or antibiotic just to ensure that the uh, sterilize, sterilization uh, procedure is uh, working and after that we, we, we drain it a little bit and then uh, put it uh, a media like this and because this uh, process is uh, very risky therefore uh, some people only put uh, one explant in one bottle just to, to avoid the uh, uh, loss because of contamination because you, you can imagine that uh, the effort of taking uh, this uh, small part is very difficult and time consuming therefore it will be better to put it only in one uh, bottle per each and after that uh, we move to the bud induction and multiplication or even somatic embryogenesis so if we uh, lucky we can get uh, directly axillary or adventitious bud induction but sometimes we, we should go into somatic embryogenesis which is better uh, it's uh, very relative uh, sometimes having uh, uh, it's axillar or adventus, but it's beneficial. But uh, actually, the embryogenesis is also a very powerful to produce a million uh, new plants. The bud induction uh, related also with the growth greater mechanism. Remember that the bud induction uh, can be inducted by a high uh, concentration of cytokinins compared to auxin. But uh, for induction of somatic embryogenesis, high auxin is needed uh, and also from strong auxin types such as uh, 2,4-D, picloram, dicamba, etc. and usually without cytokines and uh, balanced cytokines and auxins uh, generally can induce callus. Types of explant multiplication, yeah, so uh, as I said before, uh, uh, we are very lucky or some some uh, established uh, protocol usually they they, they 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 use the number one so elongation of shoots and formation of new nodes such as on potato and chrysanthemum so using node culture this is a uh, very efficient for for this plan uh, I will show you later but uh, sometimes we, we should go to the second uh, number uh, axillary branching growth and multiplication. This is also very popular. The, the one of the most popular is uh, a banana uh, in vitro technique. And uh, the the third one is the growth and multiplication of adventus But yeah, uh, this is also interesting. Adventus uh, should are formed from tissue that are previously did not have meristem such as root, stem segment, leaf fragment. 
usually uh, this uh, will will produce uh, colors but if it can produce uh, direct uh, uh, formation of suit it will be very interesting so this is a axillar suit of banana multiplication you can see here it's very different with uh, the, the potato or chrysanthemum that you can easily uh, make a nodal cutting of that explant and then put it in the new media here we we, we should separate uh, this uh, part and then for multiplication we we can uh, we can plan each uh, new axillar shoot again like this see so again uh, in the video of practicum you can see here that uh, uh, a cluster of axillar shoots in banana like this we can already make a subculture you can uh, separate uh, uh, one shoot with uh, and and put it in the new uh, media somatic embryogenesis this is a uh, considering as the most uh, potential huge clonal propagation so for industrial uh, plant usually uh, they, they use this technique yeah I, I know that uh, for instance for palm oil uh, propagation they use uh, this somatic embryogenesis uh, so it's not uh, based on one node for instance so what they do is that they form uh, embryo from a somatic cell and they, they, they do the multiplication uh, shell like this and they can produce millions of shell yeah and then uh, after that they, they, they screen it based on the stage and because they have a nice protocol they can synchronize the the, the stage of the embryo differentiation even and after that they can uh, do the pre-germination and then they they will have a, so a huge number of plant after that <coughs> sorry uh, developmental of somatic embryogenesis this is uh, from uh, last week uh, slide so from somatic cell you you will have a globular stage like this and then the heart hearts uh, shape like this torpedo and coty radonary and after that uh, interestingly it can uh, start to be a new plant or plantlet even before it uh, have a root this is an example in point set yeah this is the globular stage and this already in a heart and cold sorry maybe this is a cotyledonary stage and this become in a, a new set of plant and uh, in orchid this is a special uh, for orchid there is also formation of protocol like uh, bodies so in orchid the uh, germinated uh, orchid seeds are called protocol and if the primary protocol from a new protocol or explain like a stem or leaf node from protocol like structure then it's called a protocol like bodies and for propagation it also will be easier during the multiplication like this because what uh, you have to do is just to separate uh, HPLB uh, or protocol like bodies and you can put it in the new media for uh, elongation so this uh, uh, PLB development orchid. So this uh, this is the the, the, the new germinated uh, seed of orchid. And after that, you can see here already that some are developed into small PLB and then bigger PLB. And after this, you can separate each of that, and then you put it in new media, and they become a, a complete set of plant. One of the most important thing during the multiplication, of course, is the multiplication rate in which we, uh, as a, a producer, we would like to have uh, the maximum number during the subculture. Because 
there's some limitation sometimes for using a plantlet for subculture. Uh, for example, in potato, the maximum subculture is five because we we uh, try to avoid the somaclonal variation. So uh, the multiplication rate is the number of new shoot or plant produced from each explant or plantlet in a certain uh, period of time. For example, this is the you can see here. The, the this is a plant with uh, only one bud number, two bud number, three bud number, four, five, and six. In in one cycle, they produce something like this. So uh, from one explant, after established produce, uh, it can uh, in this case three buds per period for let's say two months. Then in a year, there's uh, six periods. So the potential number of shoot produced in a year is three times three times three times three times three times three, about seven hundred twenty-nine. And compared to the uh, plant that able to produce, let's say, uh, five baht per uh, period, this is uh, less efficient. Yeah, you can uh, already see that. And uh, based on multiplication rate, we can make a program, we can uh, try to forecast the need of our uh, equipment, we can uh, forecast the, the need for market for our uh, products, and uh, by then the program of our plant propagation will be sustained. The next step is elongation and rooting. Elongation of shoots first. Uh, sometimes the the resulting shoots are short or set to the influence of growth regulator before, uh, especially cytokinin. When you use a cytokin, of course, it will uh, it will it can help you to produce a, or initiate a bud, but uh, sometimes there's an uh, effect like that. Therefore. It is needed uh, to do elongation first, so that the suit size is normal and easy to handle. Elongation is done by transferring suits to new media, for instance, without a growth regulator or to media containing gibberellic uh, acid. But uh, still, it depends on the type of the plant and sometimes even the variety of uh, a certain kind of plant. Next is rooting. Rooting is also uh, important, uh, especially before the acclimatization. Some plants can uh, directly acclimate, uh, directly can be sown in the in the outside condition without having root. But uh, to to ensure the the successfulness or success uh, rate of the acclimatization, we, we we need to to do the rooting first. So rooting is a root induction uh, in shoot, and the root that are formed are generally advantage roots. The success of root formation, of course, is influenced by age and stage of the explant development, uh, position of the explant that were taken, species, cultivar, light temperature, sugar medium, uh, plant grow regulator, etc. And uh, the shoot produced in in vitro culture should be rooted first before being moved outside. Although, as I said before, uh, there are uh, some plants that are not uh, needed to be to have a root, and will be easier to be uh, directly put in the media to make a new cutting, such as uh, Tectona grandis. Uh, during, based on my experience, and. A uh, group of shoot can also be separated into individual shoot for root induction. You will see that in the pineapple uh, micropropagation technique during the practicum. Rooting can be induced with the plant grow regulator such as uh, indole butyric acid uh, and also another uh, auxin uh, group. And next is hardening before acclimatization. 
Hardening is needed because during in vitro condition, the condition in vitro is uh, uh, usually it has a high humidity, pathogen free, optimal nutrient supply, low light intensity, enough sucrose for energy, and present of plant support such as uh, uh, agar media. This results a plant that can be adapt to the environments of this in vitro condition, and sometimes the plant are uh, uh, let's say forget to the the uh, nature of its plant. So, character of plant in vitro is that the layers are thin, soft, photosynthesis is not yet active, polycytic uh, cell are smaller and fewer to the to capture the light effectively. Mesophyll are space is larger, stomata are not uh, function optimally and then the uh, vascular connection of soot and roots are so poor so the water flow is not good so we need the hardening for 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 uh dealing with uh, with this uh, problem so uh we we would like to transfer the plant from in vitro condition to ex vitro condition which is has a low edge and then high temperature and also the temperature are unstable high light intensity and most important thing is also not sterile and uh, uh, sometimes you can skip this hardening part because some kind of plant they are they are uh, very quickly can be adapted to new environments but sometimes are not but uh, the true thing is that uh, uh, hardening uh, is uh, can be essential to increase the success rate of uh, acclimatization. So hardening is the process of harden or to strengthen the plantlet while still in a culture bottle before acclimatization. And how we do hardening? First, we can uh, reduce uh, reduce the RH uh, in a bottle. Uh, you can put it in outside in the room temperature we can also increase the concentration of agar to uh, train the, the, the root of the plant for instance reducing sugar concentration so uh, they can already learn how to produce uh, energy by themselves increasingly uh, increasing light intensity several weeks before acclimatization and if possible CO enrichment and giving retardant but uh, in fact sometimes just put it in the uh, greenhouse before acclimatization for several days or put in the field for several days or in the room temperature for several days is enough so for instance for orchid uh, the hardening part is uh, done by placing them in a greenhouse few weeks before acclimatization. For banana, uh, the hardening part uh, is uh, done by placing in a room without air conditioning for two or three weeks. And the final part is acclimatization. Acclimatization is the process of removing plantlets from a culture bottle and being adapted to the environment outside the lab. Ideal condition for acclimatization is a high humidity around 90%, low light intensity but higher of depth of light in the lab of course, and uh, slowly it will be uh, uh, modified to the real uh, field situation. And then if we, we should use also sterile media, good aeration and drainage, and the temperature is uh, should be not too high and the procedures first we, we should uh, prepare the media and if, if possible we should uh, sterilize the media and then after that plantlet is taken out from the bottle remove the agar clean with uh, running water and then if necessary treat the plantlet with uh, fungi or bactericide train well and transfer to the growing media put in a shade condition and do monitoring or control and during the maintenance uh, don't forget to uh, give uh, water fertilizer and also controlling pests and disease 
and for fertilizer uh, it's common to use a leaf fertilizer using half of concentration after the plant is stronger then we can increase the the, the doses or or uh, concentration and then uh, if the plant has formed new shoot it can be moved to bigger poly bags and here are the tips to increase the success rate first we can also do the root stimulating uh, procedure yeah using hormone application can also be done during the plant plant uh, stage and then we can uh, put anti-transpirant treatment to avoid the uh, water loss there are uh, several uh, uh, product of that and we can also put up uh, paclobutrazol uh, and do modification of photo autotrope induction in plantlet before acclimatization such as by removing sugar and also uh, increasing co2 and changes during successful acclimatization of course we expect that the uh, leaf and chlorophyll thickness will be increased and then mesophyll uh, will develop to, for, to form palisades and spong, spongy parenchymes and then increase stomata density, cuticles, uh, epicuticles and stomata regulation uh, also should be improved. This is the example of the effect of antitranspirants such as uh, abscisic acid on leaf uh, stomatal conductance. So this is the, the, the normal uh, rate and if the new uh, uh, plan from acclimatization do not have uh, a ABA uh, application, then the the stomatal conduction is is in the high. But if you put uh, the ABA concentration, let's say this uh, concentration, it can help to to uh, uh, decrease the stomatal conductance therefore it can uh, lower the respiration rate and after 14 days everything will be normal and here the effect of paclobutrazol on stomata of citrus leaf the stomata tend to close the guard cell thicken uh, uh, and then suppressing it will suppress the water loss so you can see here the stomata tend to close like this and the, the guard cell is uh, become very thick compared to that uh, without paclobutrazol here the example of uh, banana acclimatization so uh, the routing media before acclimatization is that uh, basic media MS with or sometimes without uh, plant growth regulators and the rooting time is about four to six weeks and do the hardening in a, just put it in the room temperature and after that the uh, plant removed from the bottle and remove the agar uh, treat with uh, uh, fungicide and bactericide and also another substance if needed and then after that uh, we, we transfer it in the rice husks and sterile uh, compost or cocoa peat uh, also uh, in this stage if necessary we can also uh, reduce the number of uh, the roots because the, 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 the old root if it's not uh, very good it can also become uh, not good because uh, it will be uh, what you call it become a unhealthy part of the plant and the plant itself will also develop new roots so if possible to to cut some of the root before acclimatization is also also uh, sometime will be uh, give a, a better uh, condition and after that uh, we should cover it for one till two weeks and then you can see here uh, the nice uh, uh, plant already uh, in a good uh, shape and after that uh, you can harvest it and then put it in the new poly bag or even you can uh, just uh, 
put in uh, newspaper a paper like this and then do the transportation and these are for orchid acclimatization after hardening we can uh, remove the plant from the bottles and then remove the agar like this we, we, we rinse and then uh, we, we wash and rinse it the the plantlet and then after that we, we, we put it in the media and this is the last part the propagul distribution the distribution of the plant can also be done before acclimatization you can uh, distribute it in bottle or in another way like uh, what i will show to you yeah the distribution using bottle is uh, voluminous heavier high survival uh, although it's high survival rate and it's it's depend uh, the also the facility such as air condition of truck for instance and distribution of acclimatization ready or after acclimatization of course sometimes it uh, will give you efficient in the space or a room uh, lighter but sometimes it uh, has a uh, possess a high risk or die because it already detached from the uh, media and the 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 during the transportation it should be uh, well maintained for instance using air conditioner with a high uh, relative humidity a uh, nice example of propagule distribution uh, for instance in potato and chrysanthemum uh, we can just uh, send uh, the cutting of this uh, uh, material uh, before rooting or after rooting. The plantlet uh, can be removed from the bottle and then after that we, we clean it and then packing with uh, tissue paper or uh, paddy rocks paddy hugs charcoal and store it in a box and transport it uh, at this uh, uh, degree Celsius like this uh, just use a, a, a plastic and a, a, a new small media just to make sure that the plant are still uh, getting uh, enough nutrition and this part is can also be uh, considered as a hardening part like this for chrysanthemum or potato I think the the the, the the way they do it is uh, almost similar and this is the example as for distribution of uh, cacao seedling from somatic embryogenesis uh, so they they, they they will produce a, a plant like this and after that uh, they do the acclimatization and then after that they, they take from the soil and then clean it and they will transport it uh, like this so that's all for uh, introductionary talk and we can uh, continue with discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.